Hey everyone, this is my electric skateboard. I wanted to get one of these for a long time seeing how convenient they are around the town. At the time there weren't many electric skateboards available to buy and most of them were about 1000 euros, which is something I simply cannot afford. I decided to build one myself instead. All of the commercial ones were longboards, but I decided to go with 27 inch cruiser instead simply because I wanted my skateboard to be smaller. I was used to riding tiny penny board before, so it only makes sense to keep the board small. One of the sacrifices that I had to make, however, was moving a rear track closer to the back to make room for all the electronics. This leaves almost no room for tail. This makes lifting the front of the board quite a challenge. But on the bright side, having a longer wheelbase gives more stability, especially at higher speed. It seems like all of the remote controls on other electric skateboards are just an afterthought, so I decided to design mine together with the board. There's a couple of things I wanted to improve compared to a commercial electric skateboard. The first thing was making sure that I don't lose the remote, and for that I have made a magnetic mount on the bottom of the board where I can always place it. This mount also solves other problem, which is charging. Whenever the remote is in the mount, it automatically charges, so I don't have to worry about that. Lastly, the mount also acts as an on-off switch, so when the remote is placed onto the mount, it turns off, and when you take the remote off, it turns back on. Let's talk about the motor and performance for a second. And this is a 190 kV motor from Inertion Boards. I also get the motor mount tracks and wheels from them. The motor is rated for 2400 watts, uh, but I would assume that's peak power and not the rated one. It's plenty strong, they actually offer even a bigger one. Uh, the one I have is actually meant to be used for dual drive, and they would have even longer one for single drive, but I'm a cheap bastard and I got the small one instead. It might sound like the motor isn't strong enough, like some of those cheap skateboards where you have to push yourself first uh, before it can even carry you, but that's not the case here. Uh, in fact, if I'm not careful with the throttle, uh, it will do wheelies or just throw me off completely. Talking about speed, the maximum speed I was able to achieve was 32 km an hour. I'm sure I could go a bit faster by tightening the tracks, but I don't really see myself going that fast anyway, especially when considering the quality of roads around here. While the top speed might not be something to brag about, the range is. The longest trip I have taken was 19 km and that drained the battery to about 50%, so I could get uh, 35, maybe even 40 km on a single charge. With 250 watt hours, it's not really a problem to achieve this, however it's a total overkill, the battery makes this board unnecessarily heavy. I don't ever need to go more than 10 kilometers anyway, so it's just the way that I have to carry around. As a result, I ride this board to work daily, but I only charge it once a week. The enclosure was custom built from wood, and it was supposed to fit in with the original board, but the difference is obvious and sadly this is the best I could do. There are also 3D printed parts to cover up the insides completely. This one holding the ESC also acts as an air duct, it keeps it cool without having to use any fan, and it does work very well. So this is the board I got for the project, it's an Alien Workshop Cruiser board, it's smaller than usual longboard but bigger than skateboard since I didn't want my skateboard to be too big. The bottom of the board wasn't flat, so I had to take care of that first to make space for electronics and everything else, and to do that I just used my router. With the board being so thin I was worried that it might actually snap in half, so I decided to cut a couple of slots and insert threaded rods for more rigidity. I don't know whether this helped or not, but the board hasn't snapped yet. Next it was time to take the battery apart. This is a 12,000 mAh 6-cell LiPo battery that I'm using. I wanted to take the battery apart so that I can make the board thinner, which doesn't just look good, but it also adds ground clearance. After cutting it open, I found 6 massive cells, and when trying to desolder them, I quickly realized that my 40 watt soldering iron is no match for that, and by the time it melted one side of the tab, the other one would have been solid again. 
I also tried my other handheld soldering iron that I had, which has a bigger tip, however it was struggling just as much, so I ended up buying a new one, and the new one I got is a 100 watt one, it was very cheap, but it does the job just fine. After taking the battery apart, I decided to assemble the motor assembly, which was a kit from Inertion Boards. It took just few minutes to assemble and works very well. It includes motor, motor mount, gears, pulleys, trucks and wheels. Uh, this is the one part I didn't do myself. I knew this kit would do a better job and cost less in the long run, as I would probably mess it up if I tried to do this myself. With the motor mounted, I could start laying down the batteries to see how much space I had. And the batteries actually fit perfectly, so I just took some metal straps and built a cage around them. Uh, I've also used some foam just to protect them so that they are not touching the metal directly. The last thing to fit in was the electronics. I started with ESC. I'm using 120 amp X Car Beast ESC from Hobby King, which is just a really cheap one, but it does the job very well. It can easily handle the current, and on top of that, it also has an on off switch, which is really convenient because otherwise, I would just have to unplug the battery every time I want to turn it off. For charging, I'm using battery management system. It is connected to each cell separately and makes sure that they are all on the same voltage. Uh, battery management systems are usually used for discharging as well. They have under voltage and overcurrent protection. However, mine can only discharge at 10 amps. And since I'm pulling over 100, uh, this wouldn't really work. So I'm using it for charging only. Last piece of the electronics is the main control unit. And this is just an Arduino Nano with wireless transceiver. Uh, this one is NRF24L01 and this is just for communication with the remote and controlling the motor. Before putting it together, I have replaced the on-off switch with one that actually looks good. With the electronics done, I can finally find the room for it. Uh, the ESC sits just behind the battery, although I had to cut a slot so that it fits in, and everything else is resting on top of the cells. Uh, I didn't plan exactly how I'm going to uh, put it together, so I'm just putting, you know, I'm just putting it wherever it fits, and then I'm just using some tape uh, to hold it in there. I ended up adding also some double-sided tape and foam as well, but it works perfectly. Next, it was time to make the enclosure. I started by cutting down the side panels. I've tried following the original curve of the board and then just cut various slots and holes to make it fit. It was a very tedious process and the results weren't the best either. I'm not very good at woodworking, so I'm happy it at least works. Then I mounted the panels just using some wood screws. And before finally mounting them in place, I used some wood stain to match the color of the board as well as to add some protection. To cover it up, I used some 6mm thick plywood. On the video you can see me cutting MDF, but that's just because it was an early prototype. Uh, once again, I didn't have this planned ahead, so I was just cutting and testing it over and over until I got the shape right. The cover is also housing the charging circuit for the remote control. It is just one of those cheap TP4506 circuit boards. It takes 5 volts on one end and connects directly to a battery on the other. I had to change one of the resistors on the board just to limit the charging current. Since the charging circuit is connected with the remote using magnets, I had to solder wires directly onto them. I didn't want to heat them up too much because they would lose their magnetic properties, so I used a generous amount of flux and just tapped them quickly, which worked very well. Uh, the only problem was that the magnet was actually pulling the tip, uh, so it was really hard to hit the center and then to pull it out. Now for the remote control. As I mentioned before, I designed it completely from scratch, so there was quite a lot to do. Uh, I started first by choosing the components, making sure the electronics works. I ended up using, as I mentioned before, Arduino Nano uh, NRF24 L01, that one is for wireless communication, PlayStation joystick, a tiny OLED screen, and a couple of micro switches. For 3D modeling, I used Fusion 360. I brought all the components in and designed the case around them. I had a rough idea of how I wanted it to look like, but the electronics was a guideline I designed around. 
And with the Sculpt tool in Fusion, it's actually a lot of fun just to experiment with different shapes, but I had to print a lot of prototypes before I actually got it right. And this is the shape I ended up with. To finish the print, I sanded it first and then used some primer to fill in the gaps between the layers, and then sanded it again, and I repeated that about three times until the surface was smooth, and I finished it all off with a black spray paint. As you might have noticed, there are also two buttons on the front of the remote, and uh, these originally didn't have any use, they were only meant for a potential future update, but I actually ended up using one of them as a reverse button.